Oh, hello students. Uh, this is Dr. Dong. Uh, so today, I'm going to go over um, the topic of um, main memory. So, so we're going to say goodbye to processes, and then we're going to uh, spend two weeks with memory. So in this week, I'm going to focus on main, uh, main memory, and next week, uh, I'm going to focus on on um, uh, virtual memory. Okay. So and. Um, uh, for the rest of the semester, uh, the plan is that in this week, which is the Thanksgiving week, I'm going to release the video lecture for uh, main memory. And next week, I'm going to release the video lecture for uh, virtual memory. And at, right after that, it will be file systems. One week after that, which is the last week, will be file systems. And also during that week, I'm going to uh, uh, so so share the, the, uh, the slides for for uh for you to prepare the final exam the format of final exam is going to be very similar to uh your midterm so uh, just to give you a rough idea of what we are going to have for the rest of the semester okay so um before i uh talk about main memory let's let's talk about uh the mid midterm performance so uh, I mean, I'm I'm very proud. So because, uh, today when after I finish grading the midterm, uh, I feel like, uh, very proud of you, and I'm I'm very happy. So the average grade is is very close to ninety, and so uh, out of the twenty two students in our class, we got one student with a hundred out of a hundred. That is perfect, and uh, so so this is the distribution of the the grades. So. Uh, uh, all of the students get at least 70 or higher and uh, so so the we got 11 students with a, a grade of 90 or, or higher perfect so based on this performance I, I think I even though uh, we haven't done the second homework yet and also we haven't done the uh, the, uh, the the final exam yet I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident that all of all of us will be able to pass the, the course with a decent grade if you just keep up this performance i i, I would say either 95 percent or, or maybe 95 percent or 90 percent of the students will be able to finish this course with a b or b plus b at least a, a grade of b or b plus so so this is fabulous and uh so so oh okay and uh, I think for uh, the, the um, midterm, so uh, most of you lose points in, in question four, which is like um, tell, uh, so, 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 so write down the output of a program which uses fork to, and to, 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 uh, to generate uh, a new process. So we got the parent and, and child process. Most of you lose points over there, but um, I think this is because um <clears throat> so so because our course is it's online so we don't have a lot of of opportunities i don't have a lot of a, a lot of opportunities to show you how to compile a code uh a c code and also how to test the c code that's the reason why otherwise it will be really simple okay if we got that opportunity it, it will be really simple for you to figure out the the correct answer of question four and uh, also I noticed that a couple of students uh, say that they, they got a very tight schedule. So, so, so they think that the, the, the exam period is, is really short and then they don't have sufficient time to finish all the questions. So normally uh, I would give 130 minutes, one hour and 30 minutes to, to, to the exam or 19 minutes to the exam normally if it is a face-to-face -face exam. But since this is a a uh, <clears throat> an online our, our our class is online and this is an online exam, to prevent something that uh, that shouldn't happen, I just try to make the uh the the the, the time the time relatively short for you, okay, so that you you can only just focus on uh on the the midterm itself uh, rather rather than something else. Okay, anyway, this is uh, a, a perfect performance. I, I don't expect it. I teach this course for two years. Yes, maybe two years. Yes. And uh, 
I think for the midterm, the highest grade before you, the highest grade that I have ever seen, the average grade is around like 78 or something. And you are, you beat all of my previous students. Great. So <clears throat> today, um, uh, we're going to talk about m m memory. So here is the, um, the, the, the overview of the main memory or or the, the, the overview of our lecture today. So so what we know is that we have a disk which stores all the files and programs that we want to execute. And then we know that there is a memory, okay? So which is the physical memory called RAM uh, located on our, on our computer. And for example, the, di the disk space could be as large as one terabyte. But for RAM, normally you only get 16 gigabytes if you are using a normal desktop or, or laptop. And so, so a, a big thing is, so there is a huge difference between 16 gigabytes and one terabyte. So, <clears throat> so this is like when we want to execute some file or let's say what we, when we want to re, uh, watch a, 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 a movie, we only load those necessary files into memory in order to save space because we, we have a huge tank of, of, of content in, in a disk and which we we cannot afford to load all of them into our memory so so we, we need to we need to find a, a intelligent way to 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 tell okay which file goes to the memory and which file stays on the on the hard drive and then so if you load your program into memory so your cpu is going to retrieve those in instructions from the memory and execute them that's that's how we a program gets gets to run and so, but the thing is that okay, in order for the CPU to know okay, where is the where is the, the the instruction? Where is your program in the memory? So, so it's like the the, the CPU needs a an address book to tell to to know okay, to, in which in which area of the memory should it look for the program that it it wants to it needs to execute, and then so the address the address book is is called MMU or <clears throat> So memory ma mapping unit. So this is like a translator. So or a an agent for for CPU and and memory. So which helps them to say CPU only use logical address. So you can take a logical address as something as IP address. Okay. So but physical. So memory use physical address or we can take it similar as a MAC address. So when CPU says that I want to uh, visit the web page, for example, uh. 101.68.1.155 then so so the MMU is able to translate that IP address into the certain MAC address so that the the uh, 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 <clears throat> the desired the desired web host is visited similar similarly here CPU is using logical address uh, and then um, um, our physical memory is using physical address. So there is, we, we need a translator between them and MMU is the translator. So uh, this is the, the main line of our, of our uh, content today. And here, besides that, we're going to learn how to allocate memory spaces. And so there is a way called contiguous allocation and then the uncontiguous allocation. So that is going to be the last part of our lecture today. So, and this is the constant, and this is our content. First, we're going to talk about some basic knowledges, for example, hardware. And then after that, we're going to talk, what, talk about what is swapping, why it is necessary. And then we have <coughs> continuous memory allocation, um, paging and segmentation. <coughs> so um, this picture shows all the, uh, is the layout of all the hardwares uh, on our uh, 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 computers. We got a CPU and we got disk, we got disk and we got uh, a monitor, printer, some, some IO devices. And what, con what connects them is memory. So the thing is that if you want to, if you want to, want to, want to use your CPU to execute, execute the, a program first the program should go should be copied and pasted into memory and then the CPU is only able to retrieve files or retrieve instructions from memory so the CPU can never directly visit 
the, the disk. So memory is like the intermediate, uh, say, say, transition device, transfer device between disk and, and CPU. So, and let's talk about the, the, the storage devices. So we got different types of storage devices, for example. So here, we, we, what we know is that we got a main memory and we got electro, electronic disk. You can take electronic disk kind of like, uh, say, 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 uh, so you can take it as SSD or, uh, yeah, you, for now, you can just view it as SSD solid state hard drive and then uh, uh so magnet uh disk which is just high speed drive okay so and uh <coughs> or hard drive and then optical disk and mag magnet neck tapes so we we rarely see this these devices because but still they are they are largely used by by some uh, big big tech companies for example google and and Dropbox, so because say for example, or or Apple, because those companies offer some service called file storage, cloud file storage. So it's like you upload your file to to their server, and then they're going to store it for you, and you will be able to 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 access them later, and then they charge their clients for a certain amount of money, because because we uh the all the clients upload so large so many files, so so. They, they won't be able to afford to store all of them in hard drives because hard drives are relatively expensive. So they just use magnet tapes and optical disks to store some files that are rarely visited by, rarely accessed by, by the users. Because so from the top to the, to the, to the uh, from, from the top to, to, to the bottom. So we, we say the price just goes down, but from, from also similar with price, okay, the speed is also going down, okay. So uh, register is the most f f so so to 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 load files from registers or instructions from registers. It is the most e efficient device uh, storage device, and then cache the main memory and the solid state hard drive and hard drive. So the cheapest one is um magnetic tapes. That's why Dropbox and then uh, uh, and also Google use them to store those listed uh, so list list frequently visited uh, files because they, they are not visited uh, very often so they just store them uh, on, on those devices which are cheaper but slower to save their cost but but this does not bring big problems to user experience um, so this is as what I said typically, our the the so here, these two these two storage devices are only located in CPU. Okay, they are they are in they are located in our CPUs, and then they are so the 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 typical size of them are really small for cache. I so normally, it is around six, or eight megabytes normally. Whereas registers is less than, one KB because that it is so expensive, and then for memory. For main memory, I think normally we got six, 16 gigabytes nowadays. And then for hard drive, it is one terabyte or, or even larger. So, and then um, we can see here the access time. This is the difference we can, uh, that, uh, we, uh, that we can, uh, we can, we, uh, that we can, we can, um, we can see, okay? So, uh, And <coughs> this is the difference that we can see. So, so the access the access time of register is the most efficient, and then following that is cache and the main memory, then hard drive. Uh, but the price is also like uh, the hard drive is the, the least ex expensive one. Whereas registers are the mo uh, are the most expensive one. So, um, so. <clears throat> programs must be uh, as as I to, uh, as I indicated before. Uh, so uh, programs must be loaded into memory, and so 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 before a, the the CPU can execute that 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 uh, those instructions. So uh, so 
Here is some advice when you are buying, when you are considering to buy a, a hardware. I think this is a good time for, for me to record a video because tomorrow is going to be Thanksgiving and two days later, so the day after tomorrow is going to be uh, 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 Black Friday. So maybe some of you are going to shop for a new computer. So when you are shopping for a new computer, uh, so, so one very important factor for you to consider is the CPU. I think most people are paying attention to the architecture of the CPU, like i5, i7, and i9. Yes, they do. They 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 matter definitely. They're they're very important, and and also, uh, most people are also care care about the, the frequency of the of the uh the 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 CPU. It's like how fast it is the CPU. We want this number to be as large as possible. So. So, but besides that, you should pay another attention, namely the cache. We want the cache space to be as large, to, to be also as large as possible. So I think at, at least it should be larger than or equal to six megabytes. And if it's, it's only four megabytes, forget about it. So you won't have a good ex experience with it. And then, so, 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 so you do want it to have around 80 megabytes or 12 megabytes and so so you will you will have a much better using experience if you are doing a lot of file load file, uh, so 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 if you want to do a lot of multi-programming and <clears throat> so um and then next is okay this so to put, so normally as we as we learned before each each process has its own space in memory which we call the process uh, memory space and then or the, which we call process memory space usually different processes do not have any overlap in their like um, memory space this is pretty much like normally two houses do not share any land and but there is one exception that is shared memory which we talked about in lecture 5 and so, so uh, here, in order for to protect the security of, of, of our computer, let's say when you are executing a when when a process, so sorry, when the CPU is executing a process, it so so it wants to make sure that every instruction, every instruction is that is being executed is within the space of the process. It does not step into. It does not execute the, the, the instruction of a different process. So every process comes with in, in uh, comes with a the a, a base and a li, uh, base and limiter register. So base means means okay. So the lower the lower uh, uh so so the lower bound of this memory space like the. So so it it's this memory space starts the the process memory sp space starts from this number, uh, and up to the limited number. Okay, up to the uh, up to the 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 limited number. Say how many bytes are are over there. So the upper bound is just the base plus limit. Okay, so it means that okay, all the all so 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 um. So all the files for this process, all the all the content are stored in the in the memory whose address starts from from the base up to base plus limit. So so when our computer, when our CPU is is executing instructions for a certain process, it needs it needs it needs to check if if that address, the address of that of the instruction is larger than or equal to the base but but uh, smaller than or equal to base plus limit meaning that is 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 the instruction is really from that process it does not execute an instruction from a different process to protect the security of our computer this is because if we got p1 as a normal process and p2 as a virus okay and if virus <coughs> So if we are executing P one and then, if, at the time when we when we are executing P one, we are able to execute the instruction from another process, say of the a virus uh, process. Then, a normal process can be infected, become and become a also it also becomes a virus. This is very dangerous. So so we so we use this way to ensure the the the, the safety or the security of our computer. And then, 
So so next, a very important, a very important concept is named address banding. So uh, so the thing is that a user process can reset in at any any position in, in the memory. But how do we determine where it is located? So this is then we need we need something called address banding. The address banding is like say um, is to bind is to bind a certain area of the memory. This is our memory is to bind a certain area of the memory, a certain space of the memory to or to a precise. Okay. So 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 it's like we we are attaching this precise to 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 this to this space in memory, and this is called address banding. We bind the uh, the the process to a certain space, and then this is called uh, address banding. So to do address banding, there are three different times to to do it. The, at the compile time, when we compile our code, at the load time, when we first load the load it into memory, and then at execution time, it's like when so we we only bind the 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 the, the process to to uh, uh, a certain memory space at the time when we execute it. So, so to, if we want to come and do it at a compile time, it's going to be kind of like more difficult. It's not going to be flexible because if next time, if you want to bind this process to a different space, then you have to recompile the program again. And this is not convenient at all. So most most of the time we do it either at low time or execution time because it this is more this is more flexible and so uh, next i think this is the first and the first very important um uh definition that we're going to learn what is a logical address and and physical address. Logical address is generated by CPU. It's like so. For, before that, okay, both of them refer to memory memory address, but logical address is gener generated by CPU, and so or we we, we can call it uh, CP, uh, the virtual address. Whereas physical address is like the physical address. So it's like, uh, let me just just interpret it in a different way. Logical address is more like IP address. When you, we are talking about the address of a certain host, so most of the time we talk about IP address because it's more convenient. But actually, um, the actual address of 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 a internet device should be its MAC address. So so which so which is longer, but it's more accurate. So. The, Yes, uh, so CPU usually use logical address because it's more convenient, it's easier. Whereas uh, physical address are, uh, yes, they are very accurate, but it's not that convenient. So, uh, <coughs> so as I previously uh, talk about so it is them so sometimes we need a lot of time not sometimes a lot of times we need a translator for us to to translate a virtual address or logical address to physical address to physical address and the translator is named memory management unit or mmu so mmu is 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 the is a is a hardware device that can help us to to do that so the good thing for for us for uh, for for our for us the programmers MMU is really helpful because when we are doing when we are coding our programs we don't need to worry about where is the, the instruction or where is that file actually stored in the memory we don't need to worry about that we just we just uh, we just need to refer to the virtual address say okay we got the address of something but. So so uh so so it's it's it saves a lot of of programming workloads for programmers, and so uh, and then next is called dynamic loading and the linking. So so and I think this is really um helpful for when you go to your job. So a lot of times when we are when we are uh. uh Doing programming. When we are doing program, we need to use some external libraries. So, for example, if you are using Java, then 
uh, some some external library that you 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 are going to use are kind of like Jama or uh, let me say what else. Uh, Let's say Jama. Jama is a library for us to do scientific programming, or Weka for data mining. Okay, these are the libraries. So suppose that you have your your program. Let's say main dot Java, and then you in main dot in main dot Java you you it, so you you rely on these two libraries. So so you, when when you are when when you want to so compile your code and put produce a JAR file. JAR file is pretty much like the executable file for the executable version of Java programs. So it's, it's pretty much like the EXE file on Windows systems. So uh, and the, actually the, 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 the Java virtual machine can directly execute a JAR file. So, uh, so when you want to generate the JAR file from your Java, you, there are two ways to, to do so. First, the first way is is named, um, so, uh, the the first way is uh, is is to do this. Okay, you when you when you are generating the jar, you basically comprise both the your your file your your program and also the Jarma and back library into a jar file and this is uh and this is one way obviously this way is it is more it's easier uh so so or is it's it's more convenient because when when a person just download this jar file he or she is able to to execute the jar file right away but the problem is that you are you are just 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 creating uh so this jar file is going to be very large because it also includes those two libraries and the, those libraries usually are much larger than our programs so we're so so this is the the drawback of this approach and then it comes then people propose a way to do dynamic link dynamic loading and linking the thing is that when you are generating your your jar file it only so so you only generate from your 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 own program and then at the time when you when you want to execute this jar file you link it with those two libraries Jarma and Weka. so uh, in this way you uh, you save a lot of space uh, in the jar file so it's going to be much smaller and this is what I talk about called uh, dynamic loading and linking and it, 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 it helps us to achieve better memory space utilization compared with static linking, which is like this way. This is called static linking. And this is called dynamic loading and linking. Okay, swap. Next, the topic is swap. So suppose here we only have a, a uh, RAM of 16 gigabytes, and then we got a, a hard drive. A hard drive, let's say, one TB, and then suppose that today you you just download a very big video game. Just for example, fifty gigabytes. I don't know if there is a game that can, who, who which needs fifty gigabytes. So when you are actually when you when you want to play play the game, so what we should do is that we want to load this game into into the the memory, and then we should be able to to run it. But unfortunately, the game itself is even larger than our home memory space. We cannot afford to to load all the all the game game content into the memory. So what do we do? And at those time, we need a concept named swapping. So that is, say when we are when we are when we need this portion of the pro when we want to execute when when we want to execute the program of this portion uh, in, in this portion of pro program in the game we just load this portion into memory and then next time so if we want to load this portion and into memory if, if the memory is already full there is no space what we do is that we we kick it out we first kick this space uh, kick the original uh, this this part out so we got the free space over here and then we just load we first kick it out and then load the, the new uh, the new instructions into memory 
and this is called swapping. It's like we swap something out and we swap something in. So this is what we mean. And also swap can happen between different processes. We just swap one process out and so one process that we don't want to execute anymore out and then we swap a process that we want to, ex what we want to execute in the, in the near future in. This is called swap. <coughs> and um, the swap, uh, if you remember, um, in, uh, uh, in, in uh, I think in lecture three, I talk about a, a concept named contact sw switching or contact switch. It's like we, our CPU switches between two different processes and obviously it takes time. So here, if we want to, uh, so if we want to load a, so for here for us to copy a process, so so to to swap out a process and copy it back to the to the hard drive and the, then swap in a new process in which we just copy and paste the process from the hard drive to 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 the memory. It takes time, so and it takes a lot of time. So here is one example. If we have a process whose space is hundred megabytes and then our hard drive transfer speed is 50 megabytes per second. Only to swap that process out will take, take two seconds. And then if we want to swap in a process of similar size, it will be another two seconds. And then in total, it will be four seconds. Yes, just the four seconds for us. We, in those four seconds, we don't execute any instruction. We just, we just say, say swap two processes we, we just like swap one process uh, out and swap one process in. And this is the reason why when you have a very small memory space, your, your, your experience with your computer is going to be extremely bad. You feel like your computer is really sluggish. This is not because your CPU is, is, is slow. It's because your 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 operating system is spending most of the time just switching uh just just doing swapping okay so um next um let me talk about the memory allocation so so here so suppose here we have a a program, a program to be loaded into memory. This is a program to be loaded into memory, and it it uh, it waits to be to become a process. So this is our RAM. So there are two ways to do that. The first way is called continuous memory allocation. So that is like if we want to allocate some space to the, we want to load the program in a whole and consecutively. So it's, it 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 occupies it, it occupies consecutive space in our memory space. And then this is called continuous memory allocation. And so continuous me uh, uh, memory allocation. And there is another way named uh, uncontinuous, uncontinuous memory allocation. So this is like we, we store one piece of the, the program, the first piece of the program right over here, part, let's say part one. And then we store part two over here. So we just scattered the whole program into, uh, into different spaces in, in, in the memory. So um, the question is, which one is better? So they, they do have, each, each of them comes with an advantage and disadvantage. The advantage of continuous uh, memory allocation is that when we want to read, uh, when we want to read something from, uh, from the program, so it's, it's going to be relatively fast because everything is consecutive. When we just finish visiting, uh, executing, finish executing the first instruction, we just need to go directly to the next space to retrieve the second instruction. But it comes with a, a, a serious disadvantage, which is here, it produces a lot of holes. So this is what we, we, we say, okay, suppose here we got, we originally we got three processes loaded into, into memory, five, eight, and two. And then we swap uh, process eight out. And then we swap process nine and process 10. In. So we got this space. And if this space is not sufficient to, to load any, any process, then it, it is going to be wasted and we call it holes. 
So if we are doing continuous programming, people um, prove that that one third of the whole memory space is going to be not usable. Okay, so which is pretty bad. We got more than thirty percent of the memory space wasted, and we don't want we don't want that to happen. <coughs> so that's why <coughs> people propose uncontinuous um, <coughs> memory allocation. So to to <coughs> scatter scatter the uh, a bigger program into different parts of the memory. So uh, and then it will significantly significantly improve the the uh, memory utilization rate. Okay, the next concept that we need to talk about is named paging. <coughs> paging is something like this. Let me give you a, a real world example. So suppose today uh, you want to go to a supermarket to, to purchase something. Okay, uh, and and so. Um, you need to carry some cash into the supermarket. So some of you may say, okay, um, I'm going to, because say, suppose that you want to, you want to say, say, buy, uh, no, let's forget about the supermarket example. Let's, let's, let's talk about the, the, the bus example. Suppose today you want to ride a bus and the bus um, cost you, for example, $2, Two point two 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 dollars and three quarters. Okay, two two dollars and three quarters. So um, I think we got one person A. So let's say, um, uh, just suppose you don't know how much how much the the bus is the bus fare bus fare is going to cost you, but you know that it can be, uh, a couple. A, a couple of dollars from as little as a couple of cents uh, to as much as a couple of dollars. So uh, one person just do it in this way. It, it so it takes ten dollars. So each one that let's say take ten, it needs to carry ten dollars to to be pre to be prepared to pay the bus. And the person A is a person who does not want to waste any money. And also another thing that I, f I forgot to to talk about is that. If you pay some bill to, to the dollar, uh, if you pay a bill for your for your for your bus, you you are not going to get any change back. There is no change. Okay, so to 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 save every dollar, person A it does this. Okay, person A is, is going to take one thousand cents. Like this person just take all the coins, take the, the format of all. Co of coins, it's going to pay in the format of coins. So if the bus takes two two dollars and seventy five cents, then it is going to pay two seventy five cents. Okay, so so um, it, this person just takes a uh, one thousand small coins with with that, with him, and it's going to be very heavy. And then person B says, "Okay, I'm not going to take." Um, one thousand cents. That's that's too heavy. Like what I do is that I'm going to take it in a format. Let's say, in um, uh, in dollars. So this person just take ten dollars. Okay, ten dollars. And then to pay this, it just takes out three dollars. It just take three dollars, three one dollars, and then um, with twenty five cents. Whereas person C is something is someone okay, I'm I'm not going to bother with ten bills. I'm just going to take a single bill, which is ten dollars. So if the bus fare is two point seventy five dollars, then this person is going to waste, waste. Is going to pay that one dollar bill to use that one uh, one uh, the the uh, the single ten dollar bill to pay it and. So here we, we can say that this person A wasted nothing, zero dollars, but person B just wasted zero, uh, zero point twenty five dollars, whereas person C wasted seven point twenty five dollars. Uh, sorry, yes, yeah, seven twenty uh seven twenty uh, seven dollars and twenty five cents. So, which way are you going to use? I think most people would go in this way, right? So just take 
10 small bills and then uh, if if we have to get some get a little money wasted then it's fine so this is <coughs> and in, in, uh, so this is the example when we are uh, so for for paying bus okay but in real world in, in operating systems that we also have similar problems so suppose that you you have a uh, you want to you have a you have a your your memory space let's say um let me give you one one example say uh, one megabytes is the is the total memory space and then you want to allocate your memory space to to file suppose here we got a file we got a file uh, so you don't know how, how large the file can uh, is so but it can can be as small as a couple of bytes to be as large as a couple of ki uh, kilobytes so so again person a is say okay i don't want to use any memory space so i'm going to to get one milli i'm going to to get one milli single bytes okay one milli single bytes and then so if we got a program whose whose size is 2.5 kilobytes so this this person is going to pay to use uh, to allocate 2500 bytes so nothing is wasted well a second strategy is that so because it's, it's too too hard for us to, to manage those 1 million bytes let's just do do it in, in a different way let's just say we got a 1000 1 kilobyte Okay, so one kilobyte is the minimum bill that we carry. So we got 1,000 of them. If we want to, uh, <clears throat> so, so allocate space for, for 2.5 kilobytes, then we got three one kilobytes. And then we got 0 0.5 kilobytes wasted. Okay, so here we got nothing wasted, zero byte wasted. And then for, for the C strategy is that we got one megabyte in a hole we got and then so if we if we have a if we want to allocate space for a program whose space is two two point five kilobytes then we just allocate one megabytes and which in turn uh with nine thousand ninety nine seven point five kilobytes so this sorry nine hundred nine hundred nine hundred ninety seven Point five kilobytes so this amount of space is wasted okay here we can see that what is the best solution again it is going to be b because it avoids the trouble of managing one one million bytes but still um, it does not waste a big amount of memory space and then that's the reason why we chose it here this one kb is the is the unit is the minimum memory space that we are going to allocate and we call each of them each one kb as a one as a page each such unit as a page so if we want to allocate uh, so if the page size is one one kilobyte if we want to allocate if we if we want to allocate some space some space for a program it can be only in a couple of uh, uh, in, in the format of how many pages Okay, so this is the uh, we can take page as the minimum, uh, uh, so 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 block space that we want to uh, address. So suppose this is our memory space, we just div divide it, divide it into different pages, some pages, and then so we we use this equal size pages to 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 allocate. Okay, so this is called paging and. This can so normally in our operating systems the, the page size is should be the a power of two so it is usually between two uh <coughs> five hundred uh five hundred twelve bytes to um sixteen megabytes normally I think normally uh it is like one kb So then, for each page we have, uh, for all the pages we use a we use a frame table. We use a table to indicate if a specific page is has been allocated to store a program or if it, it if it is free. And this 
that a structure is named frame table. And then, so our the whole operating system manages a frame table so that the operating system is aware of the availability of those pa different pages. Whereas for its every process, it manages a page table to help translate uh, the logical address into into a physical address. So we are going to to spend a, a lot of time with page table next. Uh, uh, in um, uh, next. Okay, so um, page table is is something like this. Suppose, um, again, let me just give you one example. Okay, suppose you are talking with a friend, uh, and so your friend asks you, okay, where do you live? In Montclair, in the city of Montclair, where do you live? You may say, I live on One North Street. Okay, and then if you if so if you your friend so by by saying One North Street, your friend can get a rough idea of where do you live. And if your friend wants to visit you, he may ask you, okay, what is your address? What is your, your street address? You may say one, one, two is my street address. So here, this is the a big address and this is a small address. With pages, it's, it's, it's the same. So here is our memory space. And then we divide it into different pages. I say we divide it into, into different pages. And then if we have instructions stored right over here and so 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 in order for us to tell the the address of of this space what we can say is that we use a big address to say it which is the page number so suppose we associate each page with the number from one two three four five six so you are saying that you will be able to say okay the instruction is located at page four page four but but so if, if the CPU really wants to execute that instruction, the CPU needs the exact address of it. So you, you are going to say page four offset 122, uh, 100, uh, 112. Yes, this is the, uh, this is pretty much like, uh, the page number is pretty much like the, the street and uh, what street. And then the offset is pretty much like the street number. Okay, so um, this is uh, how we uh, refer to uh, to how we represent the, the location of of uh, in, in memory space. So we use page number and page of site to, to do that. <coughs> okay, so suppose suppose here. Um, uh, The CPU just come up with a a uh, logical address. Say, okay, I want to visit the the I want to execute in instruction at uh, the logical address, um, whose page is P, whose page number is P, whose offset is D, whose page offset is D, and then to to in order for us to find that instruction from the memory, we will need the help from page table. With the page table, we'll be able to translate the page number to to uh to the physical uh, uh to the page number in physical uh, from or the page number from logical address to to the um um uh, page number in in physical address so we'll be able to get the the physical uh, the, the the page number in the physical uh, memory space suppose it is here and then following the the then following the the um the uh, the page offside we'll be able to locate it right over here okay so this is uh, called paging, and how do we, how do we find a page instead? Of, uh, how do we find an instruction by using paging? So here is an example. Suppose here we have a, a process with four logical memory, uh, with four logical memory pages. So whose page number are from zero to one? Whose log, uh, whose logical page number are from zero to one to two to three? And then with, the, uh, and then we have a, a, a physical memory. We have a physical memory, which which has eight pages from zero to, whose index starts from zero to, to seven. Then, so with the help of page table, we'll be able to know. Okay, the the so the 
the logical page number one corresponds to the physical page number one. Uh, uh, sorry, the, the, the logical page number zero corresponds to the physical page number one. So we know that there is a correspondence between these two pages, and then um, the logical address, the logical page one corresponds to physical page four. So the the content so the content is actually stored at this space, and then the logical address uh, page two is is corresponds to the physical uh, uh, page page uh, page three. Yes, so that is how we uh, ref, uh follow. Uh, how we find uh, the the physical pages from from uh, uh, the 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 virtual page number uh, by using page tables. Okay, so um, and there are different structures of 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 page tables. So uh, and it's really it's really hard for me to explain uh, it in in. Uh, in the in, in this video lecture but i'm going to try to explain it because this involves a lot of math so so i will try to explain it well so suppose here we consider that we have a 32 bits 32 bit logical address space on modern computer with 32 bits it means it means that um, we can use 32 bits to represent 32 bits to represent the virtual the virtual address so, uh, and then um, the uh, the page size is each page size is four KB. Okay, page size is four KB. Page size is four KB. Four KB is like two to the power of twelve. So, so for each page, for each page, uh, the the page offset, we need to use twelve bits to to store. For to 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 represent the page of site, then we are going to use that twenty bits to to represent, which is uh thirty two minus twelve to to represent the page number. So a virtual. So if we are giving a thirty two bits virtual address, then the first twenty bits represent the page number, and then the the last twelve bits represent the page of site. Okay, so so here, um, because the the because um we uh we are going to have. Um, we're going to use twenty bits to represent the the page number. Then, um, so so um, so the the page table should have two to the power of 20 entries, page table entries. So this is two to the power of 20 is like one, one, one milli. And then suppose that each entry takes four bytes, then in total it will, so the, the page table is going to take four megabytes. That is how we reach this number, okay? So um, this is the basic structure of page tables, and then people propose different variations of that. For example, hierarchical page page, uh, page tables. So that is that okay. Instead of having two two different levels of page number, so instead of having just page number and page of site, we have first level page number and second level page number and page of site okay so uh, to see the advantage of that again let's let's use this example suppose here we got a uh, a, 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 a 32 bit machine with one k one k uh, kilobyte page size so the page offset should be 10 the page offset page offset should be should be 10 bits 10 bits which is two because one one uh, kilobyte is two to the power of 10 so then um so if we just do it 
in in uh in the previous way. So then we will have the twenty two bits for we will have the twenty two bits for the page number and then ten bits for page offside. But if we use a hierarchical space, a hierarchical page table, uh, then we are going to have twelve. We can we 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 can have twelve bits, uh, for for the first level of, of pages and page number and, and 10 bits for the second level of the of the page number and 10 bits for page offside. So the advantage of that is is this, okay? We can have this. And the advantage of that is that each each page table size is going to be is going to be at most two to the power of, uh, is going to have at most two to the power of power of 12 entries. Which is much much smaller than two to the power of twenty two entries, and this saves a lot of space for the for the page table. <clears throat> and here is another example. So um, I know that it's it's going to be quite confusing for you or or difficult for you for now. But if you just go over the book, and this is the second time that I require you to read the book through throughout the semester. I require everybody to read the corresponding chapters in the book, and I'm, 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 and in the last of the of this video lecture, I'm going to tell you um, which chapters you need to read. After you read that, you should be able to to understand what I'm talking about. And then we have hash the page tables. That is not important at all. And then then we got the third type, which which is called inverted page table. And this is kind of like uh, um, say say say, uh, important. Uh, so um, so the idea is that rather than um, to, rather than letting each process having a page table and keeping track of all possible uh logical pages, um, we just have a single table in the operating system to check to to track all physical pages. So um, so, and this can save a lot of space because uh. Uh, it decreases the, the memory needed to store each page table. Okay, so uh, this is, yes, this is pretty much um, uh, the, the content that I want to talk about today. So after this class, please spend your time to read these three sub-chapters. And so it will not take you a long time, I would say around two hours. But it will be really helpful because your next homework, your second homework, is going to heavily depend depend on this these three sub chapters. Um, okay, so tomorrow is going to be Thanksgiving. I wish everybody a warm and happy Thanksgiving. But most importantly, stay safe. I want to see you next semester. Thank you, Doctor.